The following episode contains the following things. Foul language, bad effects, spelling mistakes, horrible close-ups, tree rats on drugs, drug references, Republican references, personal references, library reference sections, cussing, F-bombs, a cluttered and often distracting background, toilet humor, lots of me saying, uh, cat noise in the background audio, and subtitles beginning with and. You shouldn't watch it. This probably should not be watched by anyone, but hey, it's the internet. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Enjoy the show. Well, after quite a while, I'm back with some new decor. Uh, I know it's been a while. I had a lot of shit going on, and I'm going to get into some of it with all this shit. You're probably looking at this going, what the hell? Today, we're going to cash in on that tactical is practical and talk about what I use at work. So let's run the intro and get right into it. Welcome back to another Gear Show. I'm Mike, and I've been away for a while, obviously. Um, there hasn't been a new episode for almost two months now, and I apologize for that, but life happens. Uh, especially for me, because I'm a stagehand, which means I work really, really funky hours. Um, for those of you who don't know, a uh, stagehand is basically the, the, the poor schmuck that gets to go to a venue at 5 or 6 in the morning, Build a show, let the show run, and then load it out either later that na- later that day or a couple days later. Um, here's some time lapse of what a stage stagehand does. You see them measuring out the stage here, bringing in the first few bits of lighting and set and scenic pieces. Boom, scenic stuff goes out. The big lazy Susan goes in for a moving set piece. More scenic goes out. The platform downstage is to build the chandelier. And there's the chandelier, more scenic. This is the dock, they're bringing in wardrobe and other set pieces. More set pieces. And during this whole process, there are electricians going all over the place, installing lights all over the house. Carpentry is busy putting in all of those uprights in there. Uh, Projector focus because there are projector gags and we're doing a uh, lighting focus right here. Boom, there it is. They go around and make sure all of the non-moving lights are pointed where they need to be. And that's about it. And it's really sped up. This happens over the course of about a day and a half. We'll usually get a show in on Monday and by Tuesday night the first show happens. I know, very exciting, right? So, uh, one of the reasons I've been away is a couple weeks was taken up uh, with a gig. And that gig, because I live here in Atlanta and everybody in Atlanta was involved, was the Superb Owl Halftime Show. Yes, I worked a Superb Owl number 53 um, at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. A eh, reasonably nice building. Um, short on freight elevators, though. Funny thing. Um Hey everyone, uh, greetings from the Edit Cave. Uh, quick little interruption for uh, clarity's sake. Um, I did work the Super Bowl, but specifically I worked the Load In, then I worked the NFL Honors broadcast, which took about a week, and then I worked the Load Out of the Super Bowl. Uh, while I do have plenty of friends that worked the actual halftime show, uh, the gear I'm showing is, is related to my work uh, with the load-in and the load-out only. The gear I used for the honors... So, uh, the gear I used on the honors broadcast is the same with the exception of I wasn't required to have the head cover or the high-vis, but the gear pretty much remained the same except for show day uh, where I wore something specifically for show. Beyond that, um, yeah, just wanted to clarify that. Uh, yeah, back to me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically put my money where my mouth is and tell you all of the stuff that I use at work employing the tactical as practical mentality. Um, what you're going to see is I have a lot of military style gear and I'm going to break it down into 
uh, what I wore, what I carried for tools and equipment, and how I got it all to work. Um, so, we're going to start today with what I wore. And uh, as usual, I need to drink while I'm doing this. So, uh, I'm just going to start with the bottom and work my way up. Uh, in this case, Belleville's. Uh, combat boots, these are Belleville hot, water, hot weather boots, uh, steel toe. I use a uh, quick wrap thingy, description in the what's-its, uh, uh, link to it in the what's-its. Um, steel toe boots because you're working around heavy stuff and it doesn't matter how coordinated or how graceful or how strong somebody is. When you get around some of this stuff, it's just heavy and awkward and accidents happen. Uh, so I'm always wearing steel toe boots. Uh, the rare exception uh, will be like if I'm on a show run, uh, like especially like a Broadway run or something, I will switch over to lightweight shoes like Converse or something like that um, because most of the time I'm running around doing small stuff. I'm not worried about things falling or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, combat boots as a starter. Loud noise. Next up, to the amusement of many, many of my coworkers, Cry Precision G3 Combat Pants. Um, I actually, here in Atlanta, came across uh, another stagehand who uses these, um, which I thought was amusing. Uh, in the stagehand lifestyle, it's occasionally feast or famine, and nobody wants to spend $300 on a pair of pants, but I do because these pants are two years old. I've run the hell out of them and they're holding up strong. A little bit of fading. Um, the pull tabs right here are coming apart, but as I don't really use them, it's not an issue. Um, I also have the Airflex inserts, the, uh, the knee pads, um, because you just need knee pads. Um, so what do I keep? in and on the pants. Um, well, I use uh, a simple Cobra uh, cobra buckle belt, a one and a half inch. I believe I got mine from Pantel Tactical. Uh, wallet and keys will go in one pocket. Uh, the keys will be leashed. The wallet, um, it's usually deep enough that I don't have to worry about it. Um, in the leg pockets, I will keep my gloves at least temporarily. Um, oftentimes I'll hook them to my work vest, which I'll get to later. Um, I usually keep a cliff bar or some kind of snack in the pockets because sometimes you are way the hell away from where your gear is stowed and it's break time. You don't want to walk all the way there, all the way back or whatnot. So you just, you keep something on you. And sometimes you just need a little pick me up. Uh, one of the things I like about these is down at the bottom, they've got uh, these little pockets down here. And down here, on one side, I will keep a boo-boo kit because you're gonna get scratched up, you're gonna get cut up. The other side, I keep uh, basically these little shit kits and some wet ones. Um, because of these, I have never been caught in like a porta potty or something without toilet paper. It does happen, so that's, if that happens, you're going to have a bad time. And sometimes you just need to take a hooker's bath because you've been running for 18, 20 hours and you got to be back in four or five or six hours. You don't have time to go home. So you hit the bathroom and you clean up with these. Look at me. I'm giving myself a whore's bath with your dog. Plus, you know, if you're doing a particularly grungy job, like an outdoor gig, like Warp Tour, well, they don't have Warp Tour anymore, um, something like that, where you're outside in the mud and the crud and you're sweating, you want to be able to wipe your hands off before you get into the donuts. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Cry Precision Pants, again, um, they're, they're fucking bomb-proof, ultimately. Um, Cry Precision... Uh, make sure you have your promotion pads in them because you're going to need them. And that's that. Uh, T-shirts or, you know, whatever shirts. Um, if you get a shirt from a show, you wear that, whatever. Um, plain cotton T-shirt. Uh, in the summer, I wear moisture wicking shirts. Um, 
Some people don't wear shirts. I'm a pasty European guy. I, I wear shirts. It's just better for the community. Um, oh, a little bit of a rewind. In my EDC video, I showed you that I use an Esotec pouch for my phone. When I'm at work, I carry two phones. One phone for life, one phone for work, because this one, everybody has the number four, they can contact me. Came in very handy uh, when I was working at the stadium because I would be on one side of the stadium and somebody would need to get a hold of me on the other side of the stadium about something. So having a second phone was handy. Um, and to that end, uh, to store them, I use a 511 frag pouch. I believe this is their frag pouch. Um, with the elastic cutout. And I have found that with the elastic cutout, drug dealers pay attention. It's a nice, easy way to carry two phones without being too obtrusive. You don't have the whole bat belt thing going on. So if you need to carry two phones for work or for pleasure, uh, you might want to check out doing this. You can, so you can run the Molly, uh, so you can just hang it on a belt, no problem. Two phones, you know, one for personal, one for work. One for personal, one for your weed guy. One for personal, one for, uh, you know, if you if you knew Ollie North in the past and he's getting you guns, you know, personal playtime essentially or personal work time, whatever. Um, so yeah, remember, like when it comes to this, once you buy something, it's yours. Modify it as you need to. Uh, like in this case, the elastic band was good, you know, if I'm keeping, you know, a frag grenade in here or a freaking flashbang or something. Uh, or, yeah, flashbang, not a frag grenade, excuse me. Um, flashbang. But I didn't need the elastic. The elastic was just a hindrance. So mod your gear, you know, figure out what you need. Um, the military guys already know this. They've been modding their stuff since the beginning. Um, but yeah, you own this stuff. You don't need to keep it in the original form factor. Um, that's not this episode. Um, depending on the show, depending on the venue, I generally have to wear high vis. So I just got myself a cheap, uh, $10 high vis from wherever. And, uh, I'm actually going to have my, uh, my lovely assistant slash personal manager slash wife uh, modify this so I can actually just weave it into Molly strips and you'll understand why in the gear segment of this, but that's that. Uh, gloves, I just use mechanics gloves. Um, however, I've been doing a lot of rope work lately and a lot of it is um, basically just holding weight and letting weight go so rope is slipping through my hands. Uh, to that end, I invested in some Petzl fast rope gloves. Um, some that I've been bitching about getting for a long time. I finally pulled the trigger on them, and I'm very glad I did. Because they have this huge uh, leather pad on the palm. It makes life so much easier. Um, indoor or outdoor, generally, they require you to have a hard hat at a lot of venues. Um... So you can either go with a traditional one like this, which I have just in case, but I haven't worn it in forever because most places aren't too picky about the headwear. headwear. Um, I've actually migrated over to a ProTech. Um, model number will come up on the screen because I can't remember right now. It's very exciting. Um, under that, I will generally wear, uh, I get all my uh, buffs from Millspec Monkey just because I like the patterns. Um, plus if it's cold out, it, you know, just helps keep a little bit of heat in. Uh, if you need to keep a lot of heat in, I have a fleece beanie that I wear. Uh, the other nice thing about these is in the summer, they help keep the sweat out of your eyes. Um, so, uh, actually let me just take a second to show you how I put them on because everybody does it differently. And at some point somebody will ask, uh, basically what I do Turn it inside out, lay it flat on the top of your head, peel it back, boom. And then this goes 
right on top. This, in my opinion, is a lot safer than a fucking hard hat because it's got heavy duty padding in it. So if something does crown me, uh, it's less likely to do significant damage. Um, quick talk about this. Uh, it comes with this little loop in the back, which I use to hook onto my gear when I need to carry it. Plus this is a mount for my headlamp. So if I have to use a headlamp and I have to have this on, I'm not, I don't have it just down or whatever. Um, I'll show you more about that when it comes to the actual gear side of stuff. Um, that's pocket stuff. That's pocket stuff. That's head stuff. That's clothes. That's, that's baseline stuff right there. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and stop here for a few minutes or, so we're going to stop this episode. Um, next episode will be the gear that I wear, uh, and the tools that I have. And, uh, yeah. So, um, if you just wanted to know about the clothing that I wear at work, there it is. Easy peasy. Um, the next episode will be gear. So yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, you know, the, the like, comment, share, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, other than that, just try to be better than you were yesterday.